Professor Dave here. Let's talk about colors. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. We previously discussed the electromagnetic spectrum. And if we zoom in on the visible portion, we see some familiar colors. The order of these colors can be remembered with the mnemonic Roy G. Biv. This stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, which lists the visible colors from lowest frequency to highest frequency. So how does this correlate with the colors of objects? Well, as it happens, most illuminated surfaces will absorb some light and reflect some light, depending on the material's properties. When reflection occurs, we can always define an angle of incidence and an angle of reflection, where the angles can be measured with respect to a vertical line perpendicular to the reflecting surface. And these angles will always be equal to one another. But as we said, light can also be absorbed, and many materials will absorb only particular colors while reflecting others. The colors that are reflected are the ones we see. So when you see a green object, like a leaf, it's because green is the predominant color that is not absorbed, but rather reflected to meet your eyes, and not because there is some inherent greenness to the leaf. If an object absorbs all wavelengths of visible light, it will appear black. If it reflects all visible wavelengths, it will appear the same color as the light that is illuminating it. An interesting phenomenon is the way light bends as it travels from one medium to another. This is called refraction. If light goes from one transparent medium to another, like from air to water, the light ray changes direction at the boundary. The angle of incidence will be measured as we mentioned before, but instead of an identical angle of reflection, there is a new angle of refraction. This will happen any time light's velocity changes, as light moves a little bit more slowly through water than air, which explains why objects in the water sometimes appear to be closer than they actually are. Light travels even a bit more slowly through glass. This is why a prism is able to split up white light into all the individual colors it contains, because when light hits the prism at an angle, the different wavelengths of visible light are slowed down by different degrees, and thus have slightly different angles of refraction. This causes the colors to fan out such that they are individually visible. Since white light can be refracted to separate all the colors, it should follow that all the colors can be combined to get white light. This is true of the additive primary colors, which are red, green, and blue. If we pass light through a red filter and combine it with light through a green filter, we get yellow light. If we combine this with light passed through a blue filter, we get white light, which makes yellow the complementary color of blue. In this way, each pair of primary additive colors combines to give the complement of the third. It is the combination of these colors that allows us to see all the others, because our eyes have three kinds of color receptors, each of which is sensitive to red, green, or blue light, which can be stimulated in various combinations. When we create art with various materials, these combinations will be different, because paint and wax and other material substances exhibit a certain color because of the light they reflect unlike the actual beams of light we discussed. So when mixing paints, blue and yellow will give green rather than white. All three of the subtractive primary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow, when combined, will subtract all of the colors from white light, and the mixture will appear black. So the next time you do some painting or see a rainbow, give a moment's thought to the electromagnetic waves that produce all of the vibrant colors we have grown to appreciate. Let's check comprehension.
Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.